Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we are going to discuss Tinea solium. In my recent video, I've discussed what are cestodes. If you haven't watched that one, just watch that first and then come here. Then you'll have a great grip on this topic. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get started. Tinea. There are two important human pathogens in the genus Tinea. First one, solium, also called as pork tapeworm, and Tinea sedinata, also called as the beef tapeworm. Lecture outline. First, I'll introduce you to the Tinea solium. Then we'll talk about its morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, immunity, treatment, and finally the prevention. Teniasis. It is caused by Tinea solium and Tinea sedinata, the adult womb of the tinea solium causes its tinea. larvae causes the cysticercosis. But on the other hand, just the adult worm of the tinea saginata is responsible for teniasis. Its larvae do not cause cysticercosis. Tinea solium belongs to the phylum platyhelminthes. It is a cestode, a tapeworm. It is also called pork tapeworm. It affects both humans and pigs. Morphology. It has three different forms in its life. The first one is egg. It is spherical. It is 4 to 48 micrometers in diameter. It is blue to purple or sometimes brown in color. It is surrounded by a thick striated wall, as you can see in this picture, containing a hexacanth, six hooked embryo oncosphere. The next stage is lava. That is singular, and its plural is larvae. It develops from six hooked embryo, the oncosphere, that hatches from an egg. It is called cysticercus. It has a pea-sized fluid-filled bladder, invaginated scolex. It takes three months to become an adult womb. The adult womb. It is five centimeters or two to seven meters in size. The worm of a tinea solium is smaller than the worm of tinea saginata. It is white in color. Adult worm has the following. Scolex with four suckers and a circle and double row of hooks. Gravid proglottids with five to ten primary uterine branches. The gravid terminal proglottids contain many eggs and they have 800 segments. Entire body is called strobila. In this picture, you can see the tapeworm, the tinea solium. It has this rounded head, the scolex, then a straight neck, and then this whole body is called strobila, which contains some segments, these multiple segments. Each segment is called proglottid, and the mature segments are called gravid proglottids, which contain hate. Pigs are the intermediate hosts. Uh, their muscles contain cysticercae and human beings are the definitive hosts and uh, they have eggs, worms uh, and cysticercae, the larvae. Transmission. It occurs by ingesting raw or undercooked pork or food and water contaminated with human feces and those feces which contain the eggs uh, from an inf eggs of this tinea solium from an infected person. Life cycle. It has two cycles. The first one is human cycle and the second one is pig cycle. In teniasis, the adult tapeworm is located in human intestine, mainly the small intestine. In the small intestine, the larvae attach to the gut wall and take about three months to grow into adult worm, measuring up to five meters. The gravid terminal proglottids containing many eggs detach daily and are passed in feces and are accidentally eaten by pigs. Note that pigs are infected by the worm eggs. Therefore, it is the larvae the cysticercae that are found in the pig. A six-hooked embryo, oncosphere, emerges from each egg in the pig's intestine. 
the embryos burrow into a blood vessel and are carried to the skeletal muscle. There, they develop into cysticerci, where they remain until eaten by a human. Humans, as we discussed earlier, are the definitive hosts and pigs are the intermediate hosts. Also, pigs do not have the adult wombs in their intestine, so they are not the source of eggs that cause the human cysticercosis. Okay, the um, cycle, the life cycle of tinea solium has completed, but it actually has two parts, like the first one involves the pig, and in the second one, it does not involve the pig. Why? Because um, of its transmission. Uh, there are two methods, as we discussed earlier, in the one, it is transmitted by eating raw or undercooked pork, and in the other method of transmission, um, the Infection spreads to humans through eating or drinking food or water contaminated with human feces that contains eggs from of the tinea solium from an infected person. So uh, if that case happens, then this is the life cycle. And this is the disease that is called cysticercosis. It is not called the Teniasis. In cysticercosis, a more dangerous sequence occurs when a person ingests the warm eggs in food or water that has been contaminated with human feces. Note that in cysticercosis, humans are infected by eggs excreted in human feces, not by ingesting undercooked pork. The eggs hatch in the small intestine and the oncosphere burrows through the wall into a blood vessel. They can disseminate to many organs, especially eyes, skin, and brain, where they answer. Each cysticercus contains a larva. Diagrammatic representation of the life cycle of tinea solium. In the first step, as I mentioned earlier when we were studying the theory, that people eat raw or undercooked pork containing cysts of tapeworm uh, it's larvae, the cysticercae. In the second step, after injection, in the small intestine, the cysticercae matures into an adult where it attaches itself to the wall of the small intestine and starting burrowing. And in the third step, adult worms produce segments that bear eggs called proglottids. These segments are called proglottids, which may release eggs or detach from tap worms. And in the fourth step, the eggs are visualized in the stools because they have been passed from the body with this tool. And in the fifth step, uh, pigs or people are infected by ingesting eggs or the eggs bearing proglottids. Whether the person or the pig is taking food or water contaminated with these feces. In the case of the pig, um, if a human eats undercooked pork, then the infection is going to occur. And in the other scenario, what will happen, the person will ingest food contaminated with the um, feces containing those eggs. Pathogenesis. The adult tapeworm attached to the intestinal wall causes little damage. The cysticercae, on the other hand, can become very large, especially in the brain, and this infection is called neurocysticercosis, and where it can manifest as a space occupying lesion. Living cysticercae do not cause inflammation, but when they die, they can release substances that provoke an inflammatory response. Eventually, the cysticercae calcify. Epidemiology. This infection is most common in US. It occurs worldwide, but is endemic in Asia, South America, and Eastern Europe. It is frequent in the areas where pigs are in excess Pigs have access to human feces that contains the eggs from an infected person and consumption of raw or undercooked pork. Clinical findings. Most patients with adult tapeworm are asymptomatic, but anorexia, abdominal pain, diarrhea, lethargy can occur. Some patients may notice proglottids in the stool. Cysticercosis in brain, as I mentioned earlier, is called neurocysticercosis and it can cause headache, confusion, vomiting, and seizures. Cysticercosis in eye. It is responsible for uitis, 
retinitis, and larvae in vitreous. Subcutaneous nodules containing cystocyte commonly occur. Cysts also are commonly found in skeletal muscle lab diagnosis. We'll need specimens like blood, we'll take tissue uh, while doing a biopsy, and we'll also need a stool sample. First, we'll go for a microscopy uh, for the identification of 5 to 10 uterine branches of the gravid proglottids. In contrast to tinea saginata, which has 15 to 20 primary uterine branches, right? And cysts are found in the tissue because we have done biopsy, and after biopsy, we visualize that tissue part under the microscope, and then we see the cyst. If the patient is suf suffering from cysticercosis, eggs are also found in the stools, and that are less often found than the proglottids. Diagnosis of cysticercosis depends on demonstrating the presence of the cyst in the tissue, usually by surgical removal or computed tomography, the CT scan. Serologic tests, for example, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA, ELISA, that detect antibodies to tinea solium antigens, and those are available, but they may be negative in neurocysticocosis. Immunity. The exact mechanism and nature of the immunity has not been uh, identified, but the research has shown that type 2 immune response generates against the infection caused by tinea solium. The treatment of choice for intestinal worms is prosequantil, 5 to 10 milligrams per kilogram once orally. The treatment of choice for cystocercosis is either praziquantil or albendazole, but surgical excision may be necessary. Niclosamide is drug of choice for neurocystocercosis. Prevention. Prevention from tiniasis involves cooking pork adequately and disposing waste means the human feces properly so that pigs cannot ingest human feces. Prevention of cystocercosis consists of treatment of patients to prevent auto-infection plus observation of proper hygiene, including hand washing, to prevent contamination of food with the eggs. And remember, do not eat undercooked pork or pork at all. Let's review everything real quick. The name of organism is Tinea stolium. Its mode of transmission is that it is transmitted to the humans by ingesting the larvae in undercooked pork or by eating the food or drinking the water contaminated with human feces that contains the eggs. Its intermediate host is pig and its definitive host is human being. The main sites affected in human body are intestine, mainly the small intestine, and brain and eyes. And the brain and eyes are infected by the cystocyte, the larvae. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is made by visualizing proglottids in the stool and biopsy of the tissue and computerized tomography scan. Treatment, praziquantil for the adult worms and praziquantil or albendazole or surgical removal of cystocyte. It has no insect vector. The stage that infects human the first one is that larvae in the undercooked pork and the eggs in food or water contaminated with human feces. Stage in humans most associated with the disease. Adult tapeworm in intestine and cysticercus in the brain that causes uh, the space occupying lesions there. The important stages outside human is larvae. In the muscle of the pig. And that's it for today's video. I hope it made sense. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any suggestion, feel free to share with me in the comment section. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics for your information. I've got my Twitter and I really upload blogs. So don't forget to check that and out. And as always, till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.